Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of FS Economy with me and heard 37 So, we're going to jump back in the caravan. I've actually been trying to get the caravan. Our caravan is uh, kind of up to the north, northeast of Canada. So I've been trying to get it down lower uh, to some bigger airports uh, where there will be a bunch more jobs. Because that's kind of one of the problems. Uh, it's a really good plane to make a lot of money. But at some of these uh, smaller airports, there just isn't enough jobs uh, to bring in some good money. But I did find this. Uh, someone flown up here to CCP2. That's Exploits Valley in Exploits Valley, Newfoundland, Canada. And we're going to fly that down to CCC2. That's Winterland in Winterland, New, uh, Newfoundland, Canada. I'll show you that uh, just, just a second on the map here. As you can see, the passenger count, although I think... Yeah, one of them isn't actually a passenger. We got uh, 85 kilograms of pharmacy supplies. That's going to pay us a total of $6,614. Uh, seven total assignments. It says eight, uh, five seats available. I guess that's including that. Two, four, five, six, seven. Uh, it doesn't really say that. That's kind of odd. All right, anyway, uh, it's 1,715 pounds. The plane already has 49% fuel. Um, which is plenty. As you can see it's only 115 nautical miles. Let's go over here and look at uh, Flight Sim Commander. Not a lot of weather stations are around here. You can see how we're kind of up in the north, northeast. You can go up to it a little bit further. Actually, maybe it's not to the north. Maybe it's just more to the east. Because I saw that. Uh, I didn't zoom out this far earlier. Yeah, we're just not near uh, that many these airports where we can go where you get good, a lot of good paying jobs and stuff uh, for the wind there's only like one I think there's one over here as well uh, so what we're gonna do is take off on a runway 24 it's a heading of two four three degrees down this way right here and in winterland zoom back out there's not really there's one there that's about it uh, so what we're gonna do is come in and land on a runway 33. So we'll fly over the uh, runway here, get into the traffic pattern, uh, and land on runway 33, heading 327 degrees. Uh, let's see, the airport elevation is about 105 feet. And also, I printed out the procedures for it, so we got the procedures for the plane. We'll use that. And I guess with that, let's go ahead and move on over to the plane. All right, everybody, here we are at the plane. I, lo I, I do love the plane. I just feel like we fly it sometimes a little too much. But it is, it is a great plane, especially for FS Economy. It makes it such a good money uh, plane. So let's go ahead and start the flight. Remove 700. How I put it exact, again, I still don't get FS Economy. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. The procedures, I don't know how long this is going to take. They're kind of long, but I know where some of the stuff is. All right, so all the switches, as you can see, are all off. The circuit breakers are all pushed in. Alt static air is down here. I believe that's it, that right there. Yeah, it is off. Inertial separator T handle is in normal. A standby flat motor switch. I actually don't know where that is. There's, like I said, there's a few things around here I don't know. Well, that's the actual prop governor test. I know we have to do that. I was looking through these procedures earlier. I didn't know where stuff like that is. I think this is all like air conditioning and stuff. That's just bleed airs. I might skip over some stuff like that because I, I don't want to spend too much time searching around for stuff like that. So maybe I'll have another chance to look at it. Uh, and find it. All right, ventilation fans to all the air conditioning. If it's installed, it is, and it's all off. Bleed air heat switch is off. If this is, in fact, this... I don't know if that's talking about the heat or not. But that is off. Cabin heat firewall shutoff control. I still don't know what... There's, there's another plane with that as well, and I still don't know what that is. I have no idea where that is. Battery switch coming on. Avionics number one. Let's come down here to the panel. 
avionx number one is on and we check to verify that it's good and it is avionx number two switch we turn that on make sure everything is good there it is and let's check our fuel quantity it should be about 49 percent uh i don't know the actual gallons or pounds this is listed in pounds but it looks about 49 percent, so that looks good engine soft key i believe that's that head over to system it says reset uh fuel totalizer if desired uh i'm not gonna worry about that if you want you can reset the fuel fuck it i just did it <laughs> i said i wasn't gonna do it and then did it all right uh wing flaps handle full down so i'll go ahead and pull that down just use the joystick to do that Torpedo heat, stall heat, they say on for 30 seconds, then you test it and turn off, so we're not going to do that. Avionics number 2 and number 1 come off, they are off, and the battery switch comes off. I think that's it with the cabin, well, the pre-flight inspection, yeah. Alright, so the parking brake is set, just check that one more time, it is. All the switches are off, the ignition is off. Uh, circuit breakers are all pushed in, fuel tank selectors, we're going to turn both on. Uh, ventilation uh, air conditioning fans are still off over here. Bleed air heat switch is off. Down. I don't know why some of this you have to, it's like you go over again. Alright, so this is before starting checklist still. Uh, cabin heat mixing air control flight to push. I do not know where that is. Uh, so I'll skip that one. Like I said, I don't know where everything is. Emergency power lever is in normal. I believe this is that one right there. Yeah, emergency power. Uh, so power lever is idle. Prop lever maximum for high RPM. There we go, all the way to the top. Uh, fuel condition lever is in idle cutoff. Uh, fuel shutoff now uh, is pushed in. I believe it's that one right there. Yeah. All right, so battery switch. We turn the battery back on. Uh, now we put the wing flaps handle back to the top. All right, so test switch. I'm not really sure where the fire test switch is. That's the governor thing. I'm glad I found that, by the way, because I know it's in here. I'm not sure where uh, the fire test switch is, so we'll skip that. What is this one, by the way? Did I say switch for the fuel test? What was that? Test switch, fire detect, up, fuel selector down. Oh, sweet. So that is the test switch. Push up for fire detect warning and then push down for fuel selector warning. I don't know what that did. You can only put it up and down. All right. So that didn't make much sense. It, doesn't, it didn't do anything, but okay. Uh, the battery switch is on. We're using battery start. Beacon switch. Let me reset my view here. So we can come back over here. We'll go ahead and turn the beacon on. Where are you, beacon? There you are. Avionics number one comes on. Make sure there's no red X's. There isn't. Uh, bus volts. It says normal full aft position. No, that all right. Bus volts. That's that's why it didn't make much sense. It says twenty four volts. We're actually below that. It says twenty four minimum. We're at twenty two point five, not twenty two point four. So that's not good. Emergency power lever normal for aft position. It still is. And the verified that emergency power lever message is off. We've come over here to the right a little bit. You can just make sure it's off. Oil voltage is low, prop de ice, fuel pressure, LPG heat, ignition, so the emergency power lever message is off. Propeller area is clear, fuel boost switch comes on. Uh, fuel boost warning should be on here. It is on, and the low pressure 
uh, fuel low pressure went off. All right, so let me read this. We'll hit the uh, starter switch. The warning will come on, and then oil, P oil PSI. Let's see. We'll check that. Let's check that where that is exactly. Oil PSI right there. And then ITT will monitor that. Oh, actually, before that, uh, NG will stabilize about 12% minimum. And then we put the fuel condition lever to low idle. All right, here we go. Oil PSI is coming up. There's the NG ITT. We'll, watch. well, actually, we have to start this first. See, it says 12% minimum, but we can't even get it to 12. I've noticed that before. That goes to low idle. Make sure ITT doesn't get up to 1090. It didn't. That's good. And another thing it says to check for is... Uh, fuel flow. It says check for 90 to 40 pph. I'm not sure what pph is. And I also don't notice that unless you turn it over to here. That doesn't actually, I don't think it shows the fuel flow here. Alright, so 52% minimum. Let's go ahead and turn the starter off. And the message should go off. It did. All right, so that looks all normal. It says generator check load. But our cert generator is off. It never actually told us to turn that on yet. It says verify generator off and CAS switch is off and bat aims charging. Well, you got to tell me to turn it on first. So now that message went off. It doesn't actually say bat amps charging. So I'm not too sure about that. Maybe you have to go in somewhere in here. I'm not really sure to notice if it's charging or not. Fuel boost switch goes to normal. And you'll notice that's that always wants us to take it off, but it says normal right now. Verify fuel boost on C the message is off, but it's not. See, it's still on. So that makes me believe we do actually do need to take that off. All right, so let's see. Avionics number two comes on. And that is up. That's working. Nav lights. Let's go ahead and turn the nav lights on. Cabin heating, ventilation, defrosting controls as desired. I'm going to leave that off. Taxing. Uh, while you taxi, your brakes are set. Uh, as you notice, there's no place to actually start other than the runway at this airport. So that's why we're started right here, by the way. Flight controls. Check that they're free and correct. Bring back my yoke so we can see it. Oh, that looks all good. Rudder pedals looks good. All right, altimers, uh, reset that. I just did it with the joystick, so that's good. Altitude select. We're going to go up to about 9,500 feet. So I'm just going to switch this here. There's nine and five. Standby flight instruments check. I'm guessing that maybe these down here. Everything looks fine to me. Fuel boost tank switch. See, it says norm, but it, I think that's wrong. I think it should be off. Fuel tank selectors, both still on. Fuel quantity check. You can see it's still right at about 50%, so that looks good. Fuel shutoff knob. Fully pushed in, it is. Let me check. What is this, by the way? I probably shouldn't have hit that since I don't know what it is, but I did, and nothing bad happened. So, we'll say this is good. I think that's it. I shouldn't have hit that. All right, bus volts. Well, actually, power lever, 400 foot-pounds. 
I don't know how you put foot pounds on this thing. Oh, it is actually. It's that top gauge on the torque. That's what I was guessing, but I didn't think that was actually in foot pounds. See, there's lots of lag in here. That's about as close as we're going to get to 400 foot pounds. Bus volts, minimum 28.5. Nah, we're at 28. We never, we never, never get there. Inertial separator. It says check, uh, oh, sorry. So turn it clockwise, pull the bypass, move engine control back to normal, and check that original torque is regained. That was my bad. I wasn't supposed to move the power level. I was supposed to put that and then make sure that it went back to 400. Oh, that was stupid. First time going through them, so don't kill me. That's kind of funny, though. All right, overspeed governor. We got to check for the first flight of the day and after maintenance. Prop RPM lever, max full forward. It says the test button, press and hold, power lever advance, stabilize about 1750. The power lever uh, idle, overspeed governor, test button release. That was a lot to go over. Press and hold. 1750. Alright, hold on a second. I gotta let go of that for a second. Seventeen fifty on the prop. So I see torque, and I see ITT, and I see percent RPM. One thousand seven hundred fifty RPM. This kind of confuses me. All right, do this again. Hit the button. See, I'm not actually sure where to find our prop RPM. But what you do, uh, test button, press and hold, advance it, power lever goes back to idle, and then we release the overspeed, governor, I'm not, I'm not sure what the hell that even tests, that doesn't make sense to me. Standby power check. Uh, I don't know how to actually do that, so we'll skip that. Alright, standby power message is off. Standby... Actually, I think that's actually part of it. Part of that test, so we'll uh, skip that. Alright, inertial separator is... It says set. That, it confuses me, because that says... Norm, let me check with that. What does set mean? Does that mean on? Because there's no th set. That's what kind of art gets me about some of this stuff. And it says lock, so I don't know what set means. I'm guessing that means on, but I really don't know. Avionics and radar. Set for our departure. Move our heading. Two four three. All right, nav source set for departure. This, we're going to use the GPS, so we'll set that. Transponder. Would be helpful if I hit the right thing. VFR. Uh, strobe lights. Strobe lights are on. The only messages on here are about prop heat and everything. Wing flaps handle. 
So set for takeoff. I'm going to set the flaps. Windows are closed. Brake release. I'm not going to do that yet. Fuel condi condition lever high idle. We're almost done. Bear with me. Actually, we're ready for uh, takeoff. Now, it says prop the ice and the other one on, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set that. Pedo heat on. Stall vane heat on. Prop auto heat. I'll give y'all some power. Put your seatbelts on. Landing lights and tax lights are on. All right, let's go ahead and get the heck on out of here. That took a while, didn't it? That's all right. I guess once you learn it, although we won't be learning it that well because we won't be flying the plane all that much. I'm sure it gets a little easier. Give her a little more power here. Up in the air and we can go ahead and retract those flaps we're flying there's more people here in the air and we'll fly straight for just a little while and then we'll actually turn to our left, although we are drifting a little bit. Actually, you can go 45 out of the airport, and that would probably be just about good. But we'll get away uh, just a little ways out of the traffic pattern. We're probably good right now, to be quite honest. So let's head out to our left. Well, the thing is, now we're so far out, we're when I pick up back up on the procedures, it says we're going to be going way too fast. In route climb. Inertial separator. Again, it says set, and I don't know what that means. Does that mean on? To me, that would be on, but I'm not totally sure. It should be on technically, right? If it's raining. Airspeed about 100 to 10 to 120. See, we're way over that. Prop RPM lever, 1600 to 1900. Which tells me we got to find where the prop RPMs are. That's the torque. Our nose is going down. Let's pick that back up. So I've got my hands off this thing. And then it says inertial separator set again, so I, I'm not too totally sure. Let's go over here to our autopilot. Autopilot on. It's really hard to see what any of that says. Yaw damper is on. Flight director is on. Let's go ahead and hit it on to nav. And vertical speed. Let's increase our vertical speed here to about a thousand it says yeah for the in route climb 110 to 120 knots which that's a that's a lot of this a high vertical speed to achieve maximum flat rate to horsepower use a minimum of 1800 rpm by the way we need to hit that red button Yeah, we're still at 28 RP or 28 volts or amps. No, it is volts. Yeah, but where is the prop RPM? Our electrical, our fuel, prop RPM 1900. It seems like there would be a better gauge for that. I mean, that's really hard to see. It's about 1800 RPM right there. And 
And it does say for uh, on the climb, pedo heat on, salt heat, and prop heat. And those were what we all turned on the ground to get those missions off. And it says you only turn it on uh, uh, outside air temperatures below 5 Celsius, Celsius 41 Fahrenheit. Inertial separator set again, that's dumb. And it looks like we're good. Uh, when we get to cruise, ice protection if installed, just as required, pedo heat and all that. Inertial separator set again, I don't know what that exactly that means. Prop RPM lever 1600 to 1900. We'll leave it right there at 1800. And then we will bring it down. Uh, bring the power down, I'm saying. And then fuel balance, we just check that. Maximum 200 pound imbalance. So that's good. I kind of want to look at the TV Mate 50. That's the only other plane that I've ever seen that even mentions is the inertial separator. And I think that might lead me to know if that's on or off. Or watch some Steve Canevo flights in the uh, caravan to see what he does with it. Because I know you use that like in rain and stuff. So I'm not too sure. Yeah, why is prop RPM like you can't read that from here? I don't think I'm too zoomed out. Like, you can't read that. There's no way. Seems like there would be a better way. Alright, well, we're going up to 9,500. We don't have too far to go. Let me see if there's a better GPS. I'll leave that up so everyone can see it. I'm obviously going to make it smaller. Now, oh, well, the hell, it's no good to us then. So it's about 39 minutes. It says uh, distance. Actually, I think the other one says distance, doesn't it? Distance 116. Desired track 197 degrees. We're flying at, what, 212 because of the wind, the wind correction. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and speed on up, and we'll be back in just a little bit.
Alright, everybody, slowing it down to normal speed here. We're only about 11 miles out. Let's go ahead and nearest airport list, Winterland. Tune into the traffic runway for landing. It is runway 33. Full stop landing. And announce our Charlie, position. Charlie, Charlie 2, traffic, Cessna, November 208, Tango, Charlie is 10 miles north, 5,200, inbound to land, runway 33. And we're going down to about 3,600 feet. That'll put us 30, uh, 3,500 feet above as we're flying over the airport. So one is, with the traffic pattern is 1,000, so that puts us 2,500 above the traffic pattern. can't actually see the airport it might actually be a little below us can't actually tell water water everywhere I guess is that the ocean actually I think that's the ocean right no this is to the well we're headed south so that's a little more to the west so there would be land out there but that should be pure ocean out to the east, the Atlantic. All right, coming up on 4,300. So it puts us about 700 to go. Haven't quite reached the airport. Seven and a half miles away. It's kind of weird that we I never actually saw the runway. But it's got to be, uh, like, below us now. That might have been it right there. And then we'll fly out to the right and then come into the traffic pattern. We're heading around 102 degrees. And we'll go 147 uh, for the downwind, 057 for the base, and then 327 is the heading of the runway for landing. Is that it right there? Well, we should go right over it, so that's kind of to the edge of it. If that's even it. It's five miles away. That could be... Is that it? I don't know. Alright, a little more power now. High RPM. Make sure that the condition lever is full as well. It shouldn't be off to our side at all. We should be going right over it. A little more power. The landing will be about 75 to 85 knots. We're good for now. Everything is set for landing. We just gotta actually get there. Is that three miles away? I don't think I'm too zoomed out. I'll have to check that. Maybe we are out a little too far. So it's three and a half miles out. Looks pretty good, the scenery. I guess this is the city or town of Winterland. Well, maybe it's just rubbish, kind of like that rock and dirt I was thinking that could be some buildings but no I guess it's not doesn't look like it now no, it just looks like rocks and dirt alright we're less than two miles out and never seeing the runway Probably call out our position again. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie two, traffic. Charlie, 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 Charlie two. two. Tango Charlie is one mile north, three thousand six hundred inbound to land, runway three three. So if there was anyone in the traffic pattern, tell them that we're right there. That guy doesn't count. Heading. 
So she was gonna turn back. Usually we turn off to the heading before that, so I didn't realize it was gonna even do that. It would have been nice had we ever seen the runway. A second we'll go down to we'll leave 11 let's see 105 feet so it'll be 1100 feet and we're past it now well enough that we can go ahead and come on down I tell you what turn the heading off I don't know if I have control over our altitude or not I'm gonna go ahead and turn the autopilot off flight director and yaw damper going off as well I'll bring back the power make a right turn here not sure if I'll do this nicely or not Back around to about one zero two. Still needs to send. There is our airport right there. Now see, 102 might have us going off too much. Yeah, it'll have us going off too much because of our position. Because 102, then 147. So we would have come over more from over in this direction. I'm going to go ahead and head over here. Obviously, in real life, we would have seen the runway and everything. We could have done this a way better job. I can't even find 102. I feel like something's wrong here. 102 is coming backwards though. And I've got 147. Something is really messed up here. About the way we're coming in. Because that this basically says we were supposed to be on the opposite side of the runway. I'm really confused right now. No, actually, I guess it is right. Because we're coming back around. I think my I'm a little messed up because of the map. Yeah, see, we would actually be a little more out to the left right here. And so then 102 would bring us incorrectly. Then to 147. As you can see, we are high as well. Go to one four seven. We got a little close. Not too bad, actually. Downwind. We're still high. There she is right there. I can 
said were high. I was trying to get down. So I'm kind of new to the traffic patterns and everything trying to do that, so we shall get better. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie two, traffic. Go ahead and post some flaps out. back on the power here. We don't want to go slow down too much. Where are you, runway? Out a little far. I'm not going to start heading because I don't feel like I can take my hands off to do it. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie 2, traffic, Cessna, November 208, Tango Charlie is on final, runway 33 to land. Alright, you, you can definitely feel wind because I'm trying to get back over to it and it just does not want to go. So we're going to have to fight the wind here. That sucks because we're not lined up all that well. Oh, I'm trying to get down. Oh, I'm trying to get down. No, this is not at all what you want to do. I just cannot get lined up. My God. I can't even see. I gotta move my head right in that post. girl cockeye landing I'm not sure how that I mean I ugh. that was a bit awkward I, I don't even know where the buildings are okay so they're back there oh my goodness that was uh, that was odd couldn't get lined up for crap and I had that post right in the middle that was very odd Oops, got her stopped. There we go. Now, is that windsock saying? Oh, yeah, you can see it's brisk. But it's saying it's blowing it. Yeah, I guess that would. I would have been going against the wind. All right, so that makes sense. Yeah, I, I could not get over for anything. We probably were pretty pitched up there. I was trying to pick up the speed and I put a little more power and we started uh, pitching up, but yeah, that was a, an awkward, awkward landing. Not my best. I probably could have been uh, made better if I had a little bit longer push. I could have gotten straightened out maybe. Although I mean, we would have still been fighting the wind. Then having to move my view. All right, let's go ahead and stop her here. FS Economy will grab her. And as that, wait for that. Let's go ahead and look at the procedures. Well, that sucks. I was thinking it would come straight back. Apparently not. All right, so the flaps are up. Let's go ahead and tell everyone we're clear of the runway. Charlie, 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 two traffic. Yeah, just so it'll look better. Ice protection can all come off. I thought would take me over here. Pedo heat, stall heat, prop auto heat. 
standby alternate power. I don't know where that is. I'm thinking it could be it right over there, but I'm not for sure. So I do not know where that is. Uh, strobe lights and landing lights can come off. Uh, fuel condition lever goes to low idle. Alright, let's go ahead and next up will be shut down. So parking brake is off. Let's go ahead and uh, park this puppy. Kind of interested to see that replay. That might be a hideous landing. I don't know. I tried to save it. Well, I don't know if... Uh, what? Because uh, we were kind of cockeyed, but... Trying to crab it, I had moved my view, I don't know, it's, it's a tough landing anyway. It's a pretty brisk wind. I think, what is the maximum for this plane? 20 knots crosswind? I'm not sure if we would have been above that or not. How far am I off? Oh my goodness, look how great that was. That was superb. <laughs> oh, I thought I had the parking brake. There we go, final parking brake should be on. Alright, so the parking brake is set. Bleed air, ventilation, fans, air conditioning, everything off. Uh, ITT stabilized. Uh, prop RPM leather, or, uh, lever goes to feather. And you're supposed to let the ITT uh, settle for about a minute. So let's look at some other things. Prop lever, feather, already done. Fuel condition lever, lights, we'll go ahead and turn all the lights off. The taxi light can come off. Uh, the nav can come off. We got the power. Seatbelts, no smoking. Power outlet. That is off. I'll leave the beacon on since we're still running. Avionic switch is going off. Now we'll go ahead and let this cut that off. And then we have the battery switch. That is off. Let's turn both of these off. I don't know what else is up there. Because certainly it wouldn't be... Right, it wouldn't have anything up there that we need to mess with. Let's go ahead and check it out. Oxygen. And fans. I'm trying to see what that red thing is up. That's probably like a light switch or something, I'm guessing. The hell are you? It's got to be like the lights or something. I just why 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 can't I see you? That's a standby though. Standby flat motor. That's what that is. I'm glad I saw that. Okay, so that's in the thing. The only thing I'm missing now is the power thing. Standby power. So that's the standby flat motor. Sweet. Glad we went up there. We actually found something out. I'm just kind of looking. Pedo heat. Yeah, there's all the tie downs and everything. Looks good. All right. Not that any of that matters. Let's go over to FS Accounting and get ourselves paid. All right, everybody. So the income was $6,614. We ran the plane for an hour and six minutes. It's our plane, so we didn't pay anything. That makes more sense. Fuel, all zeros. Uh, ground crew fee, $661.40. $375.72 for the booking fee. Uh, that's $1,037.12. Distance bonus, zero. Uh, earnings this flight, $5,576.88. That's $1,212.88 to YT Flyers and 4364 to me. I'm not sure if we want to even try. 
I'll bring out the calculator. 24,223 plus 20,496 plus 48,357 plus 41,711. We're getting into some bigger numbers there. 134,000. So I think the goal was around 300,000 to buy, what was that, 337, I think, is what we want to try and get next. Or a Baron, I can't remember which one it was. So that's not too bad. Let's look, I don't know if I can even find it right there. There we go. That's not what I want. Buy a model right there, Beechcraft. Burn 58. Search for that. How much are those? Yeah, those are all around. The cheapest one is 323 grand. So probably best to get around 400 for that. Let's check out the Cessna 337 Skymaster. Man, there's not very many of those. For sale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wow, they range all the way from 245,000 fully loaded with not. Hardly any engine time for only 245, and we, we're close to that. I have no idea where our KNC is. Oh my god, Korea. How would we get that from all the way over from Korea? Well, it takes some work. Obviously, that person doesn't want to sell it, so that's kind of pointless. Don't make it for sale. <laughs> no one's going to pay you 5 million. No one's that dumb. Uh, so 245, man, that. I bet it will be sold by the time pos possibly. That would be fun to get that. All right, well, I'm going to try and start flying a little more. By the time you'll see, I probably got like 10 of these uh, before this episode even goes up. Uh, so I'll be working by the, for a while probably by the time this even gets up. But uh, I'm going to try and fly FS Economy at least twice a week uh, while I'm working and everything. Um, so I'll aim for at least. We do have a lot more people flying all of a sudden. So that's really good if we can keep that up. Anyhow, that's going to be it for this episode, everybody. Hope you all did enjoy it. I'll catch you guys on the next flight.